Today we're going to be looking at chart configuration in Dash Trader Pro. Now the chart is the window you're going to be looking at the most, so it makes sense that you personalize it, customize it to best suit your needs or your preferences. First things first, when you open a brand new chart window from the quotes menu, top left, quotes chart, it'll come out as blank. It's not going to be linked to anything. You're going to have to use the anchor function to link it to a montage of a watch list. Now you can also just change a, a chart directly. If you select the chart, type in a ticker and press enter and it will disconnect from any montage. You can also blank it by using the minus sign or the dash like so. We're going to keep it as spy just so we can demonstrate this today. A lot of people don't know this that the, the chart has different areas. That's a topic for another video but the volume area is separate from the candle area and you can actually just drag the size of it like so. Okay so let's head into the configuration menu. Right click configure Let's take a look at each setting uh, group one by one. First one, grid settings. So there's a horizontal grid line. That adds horizontal lines that coincides with the y-axis. Then you have vertical grid lines, which coincide with the x-axis. So that can help you uh, create a nice little grid. You can also change the style of it. Let's just make it dashed. You can change the color. Let's go with a light blue. You can change the thickness. Let's go with a uh, three. There you have it. Reminds you of the graph paper from high school. There are also some other lines here. Let's just tone this down a bit. There's the day separator, the market open, and the market close. So the market close is right here. That's four o'clock or whenever the market closes for that day. Then you have market open, which is black. That's at 930. And then you have the day separator, which separates the after hours from the pre-market. And that's the blue line. Let's go in some more. That covers grid settings. Next is background name font. So this controls the symbol. Now you can choose to hide the symbol. As you can see, I unchecked it. You, you no longer see that it's spy. You can still see that it's spy in the top left. You can add it back. You can also choose the position. So if I go very top, it'll appear at the top. I can put it on the bottom or any of these other settings. I think uh, wherever it was is probably the best place so it's not covered by the candlesticks. Then you can change the font for it. Let's have some fun here. Let's go Comic Sans, bold italic, 16, let's make it red. Oh, that's 16, it's a little bit too small, 72. That'll do it. There you have it, Spy 5 Minute. Uh, let's uh, look at the next section here for font. Now study name, this will show the study information on the top left. You know, we're going to add that after just so we can see it. So change it to Comic Sans, bold italic, uh, I don't know, 24. Now the color is not going to matter even if I put it to red. Let's just put it to red for a second. I got to add the study information here. So config area, show study info, show study latest value. There you go top left. So notice how that color option it didn't even stick if I change it to, I don't know, lime. It's not going to do anything. It just coincides with the color of that study. So I have my view app is blue. As you can see, the text is blue. I have my 8 and my 20 MAs as red, and it'll just follow that color. Let's actually go and change the study just to prove that. So let's change the 200 to, I don't know, purple. There you go. There you go. Next is the label. This will control the Y and the X axis label. Going back to our tried and true Comic Sans. Bold italic. Let's go with a, I don't know, something outrageous here. 36 label. And let's make it red. Okay, there you have it. 36 may be a little bit too big. Let's change that back to 16. Right, so now that, that's now the labels on the Y and X axis. And then the number of decimal places. So this really depends on the ticker. You can reduce it to one. You can go two or three or four. I think it goes up to five. Some Obviously some stocks don't trade to five decimals. Next is the color section, chart background. Here you can change the background color of the chart. I'll make it this nice light pink there, fuchsia, whatever you call that. And then you have the axis line color. So that's the color of the axis. I'll put it yellow so it stands out. You can see that. Here we have footer text. So this is hidden by default here. If you just show the footer, 
I'll just change the text to red. We'll make the background color nice and bright here, yellow. You're going to see the footer down here. So this, as I hover across, it's going to give me values for that candle. It's also going to give me values for the studies. And obviously, I have a lot of studies shown here, so it's going to be cut off. Um, but basically, it's showing me the high, the candle, the low, candle, open, close, view app, the moving average, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Next option, mouse wheel settings. Now this is a very useful one. You can control how fast the zoom is. So right now it's on slow. As you can see, I'm scrolling up. It's not going too fast. If I change it to fast, look at that. Look how fast I'm zoom zooming in and out now. That's really useful on smaller time frames. Or you can choose not to uh, zoom at all. You can use the mouse wheel to scroll instead of zoom. All right, so, so I'm scrolling right now. Obviously that's not very visible. Let me just use my keyboard to zoom out. I'm scrolling, I'm not zooming. You see the slider on the bottom there? So that depends if you wanna use you know, your plus minus keys for zooming and then your mouse for scrolling, you can do that. Very useful for navigation. Next option is the chart global settings. So this has to do with global trend lines. I'm not gonna talk about these because there's a video out there. I'm gonna link to it uh, maybe in the description, but uh, Lee W put together a video on how this stuff works. Basically uh, for making sure your levels these levels here are coordinated across all your different charts. Next on the top right, let's talk about tool tips. I'm not sure what this setting does, fixed location. I have no idea what that does. It doesn't seem to do anything. But if I uncheck this, don't show tool tip upon left clicking, right? So don't show. Now if I left click a candlestick, you see how it's giving me the information for that? And I believe if I have executions, it'll also show me the execution information on the triangles. So it's showing me for that candlestick, high, low, open, close, view app, and all the moving averages. Right? And I'm left clicking to get that to show up. Transparent, I'm not sure if that does anything. Uh, it seems to remain the same color. Now let's talk about Y axis margin. This one's very useful. So this can control if you want a, to have some padding on the right hand side, let's make it 200. For some reason you have to put fixed or it's not gonna stick. So I put 200. Notice now I have 200 of uh, padding to the right. That's really useful if you want some just some some room to be able to read the candlesticks and not get crunched up to the side here. Now I can also show only show margin for the last point, right? So that's only going to be applicable when I get to the very end of the scroll, right? So right now I'm in I'm in the past. There's no margin, not until I get to the very end here. Now there's a margin. That's what that setting does. And then top and bottom margin, uh, this controls how much how much padding there is between the last price action on the bottom and the top. So if I put it at, uh, I don't know, 75, this gives me more room, top and bottom, that, which is really good so you can see some stuff, moving averages and levels that are you know, maybe out of the way. Uh, I think default's like maybe 10 or something, which is not too much, right? So let's just put it back, let's put it at 50 there. Now crosshair, this is uh, pretty useful. So crosshairs, you can change the style. Say I make it uh, I don't know, solid and I change it to, what's bright purple here. I can also change the width. So now my crosshair is really standing out, right? But you can also use, um, change this setting, draw crosshair when mouse moves. So I turn it off. I don't have a crosshair anymore, right? But I get it back when I hold the mouse left click, I get it back. See that? That's pretty useful. Sometimes you're scanning across and the crosshairs all over the place. Maybe you only want it to come on when you're dragging, right? Anyways, next, um, label text color, label background. So this basically controls when you're dragging for that crosshair. The labels on the side. See that 266.51 there on the right, right? Let's just turn off this tool tip. It seems to be blocking everything. Um, that 266.75 right there, that's moving up and down with my crosshair. That's what that does. All right, see that? Turn that setting back on. Next, um, so these are just basic settings. Save trend line, double click to trade. This double click to trade is useful if you just wanna double click an area and it'll load it into the montage. Load the price into the montage, uh, which is the topic for another video. You can clear all these settings or you can save as default so any new chart you open will inherit these settings here. Um, this display trend line information. Now this one's very useful. If you use trend lines, 
I have a hotkey for that, I believe here. If you use trend lines, you can display the information when you hover. So it's telling me uh, that's based on the y-axis. So a dollar and six cents, the price changed by 0.4% over a period of 14 bars, right? And that's obviously dynamic if I were to shrink the uh, trend line and make it go like that or something, right? Eight bars, 0.6%. Then lastly, use large toolbar icons. This, I'm going to have to restart DOS to show you guys the difference, but if I check that, I enable toolbar, you can see it's a small, see how that's small? I'm going to reload DOS and then come back and show you guys what it checked on. Alright, we're back. So here's the with the toolbar on large icon settings. As you can see, it's a little bit easier to read uh, for anyone who likes to see big fonts. And that concludes the video, so thanks for watching.